In this video, I'm going to give you 7 different Google Ads optimization tips you have been using these past few months to scale multiple e-commerce brands over $30 million in revenue at a 7x ROAS and beyond. And the beauty about these tips is they work regardless of the niche or industry your brand is in. But with that, let's get right into the first tip, which is content suitability optimization. Now, this is something that we recently started doing for a lot of the brands we handle under my Google Google Ads agency you are marketing, but this I can tell you is almost a hack when it comes to smart bidding campaigns like Performance Max campaigns. Let me explain. So right here, when you go inside your Google Ads account to your Google Ads dashboard, first thing you want to do is under tools and settings, you want to go under setup to content suitability. This is the section where you get to now decide which kind of content your ads show up for. And this is mostly related to the display traffic, related to the performance max gimmick asset group section. But the way it works is fairly simple. There's two things you need to be optimizing within this section. First thing is the excluded sensitive content. And the second section is basically the excluded placement section. Now, going over the first one, what we like to normally do for any e-commerce brand we work with this we like to check all of these boxes unless you are selling to a specific audience within each or any of these topics right here it's absolutely a waste of money to be even considering ranking for things like tragedy and conflicts and sensitive social issues so on and so forth because the people that are kind of going around looking at these topics browsing around them they're not really in the buying intent mood they're not going to be your best quality customer so it's better off to completely exclude them from targeting next is excluded placements now there's a few placements we like to really exclude this is going to depend on what kind of niche your brand is in this is where a customization takes place but things such as certain apps we like to normally exclude the placement basically the app categories and we like to get rid of all of these phone apps because the reality is based on my experience now just this year generating over 30 million dollars nobody's going to be purchasing that's looking at an app or inside an app playing a video game looking at the news browsing the weather etc so you might as well just go ahead and exclude it from the start and the reason why we do all these things right from the beginning the reason why we do all these exclusions is because we want more efficiency in terms of the ad spent we want the money we are spending to be spent properly on the things that matter rather than just wasting them on these unnecessary placements this first tip it's going to save you a lot of money and it's going to make things a lot more efficient because now your ROAS will be higher and as a result your campaigns will also technically perform better but this now brings me to tip two which is settings for target ROAS or target CPA it should be based on the lowest values for your business here's what I mean so what most e-commerce brands do is they go inside a performance max campaign let's say for example they go within the settings section and for the main settings like the target ROAS or the target CPA settings what they do is they set these high numbers which they want the brand to be achieving this is their ultimate goal what they fail to realize is that setting these high numbers right from the beginning it's like setting a barrier like setting a limit a ceiling for your performance max campaigns or any other smart bidding based campaigns which means once the ceiling is met google's algorithm will stop trying to overachieve it will stop trying to get you a ROAS that's above what you said here it will stop trying to basically outperform itself that it previously did so the better approach the better strategy here is to actually start with the lowest possible number you're fine achieving here so let's say you want to achieve a thousand fifty percent target ROAS which is a 10x ROAS and above but your break even is a 6x Instead of saying 1,050% here because that's your target, maybe put this at 700%, which is a 7x ROAS, because now you work from the ground up. Because you're already starting it off at a low number, now with optimizations, with over time, launching more campaigns, scaling this campaign, etc., this number can increase and improve and become more and more steady. And the perfect example of this in effect is this brand right here, which I just did a case study on recently, which you can check out on my channel. But basically, what we did is if we look right here inside the performance max campaign we can see that overall in the last 30 days if we look at the target ROAS that this campaign has been able to achieve in the last 28 days at least we can see that it's been able to very steadily achieve basically a 2000x ROAS that's the ROAS value that it's at basically 2000 percent but if we go into the settings section if we check out what the target ROAS value we set here is we can see it's barely 100%, which means a 1x ROAS. 
that's the level that this was already set at previously. We didn't want to touch it because we didn't want to, you know, change anything if it was already working. But after optimization, after making the entire account better, it's able to achieve the 17x ROAS value here, which basically in this situation is extremely high for this brand. Whereas the ROAS limit is 100%, which is a 1x. So this shows you that these nitty gritty details with the target ROAS values, target CPA, those are really not the end of the world if you have a search engine number in there. But the lower the number is, usually the better it's going to be for your brand. But this now brings me to the third tip, which is you want to focus on incorporating an ecosystem of traffic with Google Ads. Here's what I mean. Most brands, what they do is they'll have a lot of campaigns in here, which are performance max, standard shopping, a bit of search campaigns, and those are mostly targeted towards cold traffic. I mean, that's the main goal with these campaigns. What they fail to do in this situation is they fail to do any type of big level retargeting stuff. So all their brand ends up doing is just cold traffic. What this fails to do is this fails to create any type of ecosystem within the brand. And what this ecosystem is, is essentially is basically a diversification of cold traffic with retargeting. You want to have certain performance max image running together a ladder for cold traffic only versus those that are for retargeting as well as cold traffic. And when you add on top of this things like standard shopping commands for retargeting purposes along with search campaigns discovery demand jet etc that's when you get this whole loop this whole ecosystem of traffic which now works in your brand's favor and this is when you can use this ecosystem to apply with this next step which is the 80 20 rule now once you have this ecosystem in place this 80 20 rule basically says that 20% of your campaign should be receiving 80% of your budget, which means if you have this loop created of cold and hot traffic, 20% of your campaigns should be these cold traffic campaigns essentially. And that's where 80% of your budget should be diversified towards. So a lot of your budget, a lot of your daily ad spend should be going towards these campaigns because that's how you're going to get traction for your brand. This now brings us to the fifth tip on the list, which is segregating products based on performance. Now, for the longest time ever, I used to recommend segregating based on the collections, segregating based on the price points, the cost of the goods, etc. But nowadays, what we're finding better success with is segregation based on the performance of the product itself. And the way it works is fairly simple. Anytime you have a testing campaign going on with it, your ad account, it's gonna be testing different products out and each of these products will have different results. Some of them will be scaling, others will barely be scraping by. What you want to do, the last thing you want to do is put the product that's getting you a 20X ROAS in the same campaign as a product that's got you maybe a 2X ROAS or a 1.5X ROAS. And that's where you wanna have a segregation strategy where it's based on performance. The bad ones get their own approaches, the good ones get their own, and then the ones in the middle where they're on the verge, they also get their own. And this strategy, again, helps us create that ecosystem I mentioned earlier, which then you can apply the 80-20 rule in terms of budget here, and you can just kind of work things around based on that. Now it brings us to the next step, which is reduce the smart bidding campaigns control overall. Now, some of the ways we like to give or get back control with performance max campaign, especially is within the settings section. We normally like to go down here and we like to uncheck things such as automatically created assets. A lot of the brands I audit under my Google Ads agency or marketing often have this box checked. And this is the last thing you want to do if your main goal is profitability, which by the way, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you need extra help scaling your brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see essentially how we can work together and make that happen. But essentially, unchecking these boxes is the first way you get a lot of that control you lost back. Next way is by basically not setting arbitrary numbers for the target ROAS values. Again, it goes back to actually setting numbers which make sense on a business level and not just random numbers which you hope that a campaign can achieve. Now, this brings us to the final tip on the list, one of the most important ones, which is avoid optimizing on an extremely narrow level. I speak to so many brands out there which want to basically start scaling by narrowing down how they're approaching their audience. Some want to launch separate campaigns based on each zip code that they're targeting. Others want to basically segregate based on the devices or basically other cities or states they're targeting. And they just want to do all these nitty gritty details, which is way too fancy. And all it does is it overcomplicates the process because the truth be told, Google's algorithm is fairly smart. If it notices a certain zip code performing better than another, it will show more of the ads there. You don't need to kind of go way too nitty gritty and have a bunch of different commits with all these different zip codes because all it does is it makes it harder for you to sustain your results and even get long-term results. But again, if you run a brand doing a million dollars a year, you need extra help scaling to the next level with Google. 
go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and schedule a free call with me to see essentially how we can work together and make that happen. But check out this video right here on a brand which we just exposed recently, which is doing over seven figures a year, multi seven figures, just from these kinds of Google Ads strategies and tips.